Imagine a brand launching in a hyper competitive market with players that have been around for a couple of years. And some of these competitors have actually raised hundreds of millions of dollars. And this brand raises zero. What do you think the odds of this brand succeeding are? Welcome to the Google Ads Aces show, where we take a look at the Google Ads performance of some of e-commerce biggest and hottest brands. As always, we'll take a look at what they're doing well, what they could be doing better, and get some ideas that we could be using in our own campaigns. My name is Dennis, and I'm the founder of Store Growers. And in this episode, we're gonna talk about purple mattresses. You might have seen their commercials. Um, they, they're pretty big on, uh, on YouTube. And as I said in the intro, they never raised any money. Um, and that's if we're talking VC investments. Uh, because actually they did raise money. They did, they launched some crowdfunding campaigns. Um, when they started out in 2015, they actually launched a Kickstarter campaign for their mattress that raised $171,000. And this is a strategy they've actually been using again and again for um, subsequent products. So without any external investment, they were forced to actually fund their growth from their revenue. So they couldn't be splurging on things um, that actually didn't make money because they had to use the revenue in order to get more customers. So that, that's pretty huge because one of their biggest competitors is Casper Mattresses. And Casper Mattresses raised $240 million. Um, other, other competitors um, that sell direct to consumer um, mattresses um, have also raised uh, $32 million. That's a, a company called Lisa. Um, so if you compare all of the, there, there's a lot of other uh, matter startups, but if you compare, um, if you see, if you look at what makes them different, you'll see very similar things. They all sell direct to consumers. Their prices are lower than if you were to purchase offline at one of those uh, mattress stores. Um, they all offer like pretty convenient and often free shipping. Um, they've got a hundred night trial, many of them. Um, and their product is kind of similar. Probably if you would ask um, the brands themselves, they wouldn't agree on this, but their products are, are, are pretty similar. So all of these are also true for, for Purple. And uh, Purple mattresses came into the market two years after some of those competitors started. Um, like for example, Casper, that was the company that was founded two years earlier um, and they had raised all of that money. So um, what, that, what they did is they actually paved the way for people to be comfortable with uh, buying a mattress um, online because it's, it's something that uh, people want to try and, and, and test before they buy. Um, but even though like customers uh, or consumers were, were more comfortable with buying online, um, Purple still had to find a way to actually get those consumers. And that meant they had like two options. Uh, one is to look at what Casper and other competitors were doing and try to do it better. Or two, they could do something different. Um, and as we'll see later, doing the same than, than the other competitors are doing, but doing it a little bit better, would require a ton of cash, uh, which they didn't have because they just had the money that they raised for the Kickstarter campaign, which probably paid for the product um, and gave them a little bit extra inventory, but nothing crazy that they could start splurging. So what Purple did is they chose the second option and they decided, decided to start doing things differently. They chose to go for branding and for video um, and to really pursue that as a as a differentiator, as to, to, to really set them apart in the market. Um, so here is the video that accompanied their first Kickstarter campaign, for example. Didn't even feel me slide in there, did you? What? That's the memory foam. <laughs> now let's talk about what it'll take to get you in one of these. Wow, comfy. And the craziest part is that you pay a premium for that kind of sales experience. But hey, for that price, hopefully you can finally sleep comfortably. Nope. Same old mattress technology, same old back pain. Pretty funny, right? Um, 
I wanted to show you a little more, but we'll watch plenty of their, their commercials in this video. So, uh, but but this, is, this kind of video is exactly why I wanted to cover purple uh, as part of this series, because um, not only do they create the, these videos, but they push them really hard um, through YouTube ads. Um, and there's only been a few brands that have been really able to um, be successful at, at YouTube ads. And purple definitely is one of them. So that's why um, we're, we're gonna take a, a closer look at what they're doing. Let's start out with the big picture of what Purple's doing on Google Ads. Let me first give a shout out to uh, Brian Garvin, who is the former um, VP of Ads at Purple and recently uh, switched jobs. Uh, but thanks to him, I was able to get this, um, a lot of insider knowledge uh, of him sharing it on different podcasts and, and presentations and stuff. Don't worry, I'm not revealing anything um, that wasn't revealed publicly, um, but he, he's been really, I've been stalking him on Twitter and, and on, uh, on the different podcasts and stuff. So all the information, a lot of the information you see there here today is, is thanks to him. So uh, thanks. Um, now, let me tell you, always when I'm putting together these, um, this overview, I'm actually looking at how much uh, a brand is spending. And it, it takes so much time because it's, um, it's the hardest part to research. Um, because there, there's a lot of tools available to research um, search spend, uh, but shopping it already gets harder and it gets a lot harder when it comes to um, YouTube. Um, so actually, um, while doing some digging, I found some numbers. So I had to make many assumptions. Um, I'll explain a bit later um, which assumptions I made, but let, let's start with the overview. Um, so Purple Ads, uh, I looked at her November 2018 performance. Um, as always, ad spend clicks uh, and CPC for each of the different uh, campaign types. Their search ads, $41,000 uh, in spend, around $14,642 clicks at $2.8 um, cost per click, well, pretty high. Uh, then a shopping ads, a lot lower, uh, only 5,000 spent around like 1,800 clicks, uh, again, 2.8 um, CPC. And then the bulk of purple spending, YouTube ads for about 1,700,000 per month. Um, so that gets them around 500,000 clicks at $3.45 um, per click. Um, I'll go into all of these, if these numbers puzzle you a little bit. Um, display ads also at 41,000, gets them around 91,000 clicks um, at a CPC of 0.45. In total, that's 1,000, uh, 1,787,500, uh, which gets them around 600,000 clicks at two, at almost three um, dollars per click. Now. What are, um, how did I get these numbers? Well, a lot of the information actually came from investors documentation that um, Purple put out. So they were looking for investors and early 2018, they merged with a company uh, and IPO. So they, they made a lot of information uh, public as a result of that. So I was able to calculate, um, um, go backwards in, in calculating um, so they would do around like 500, 500 million um, in revenue in 2018. And it had budgeted around 143 million um, in, marketing, uh, in marketing expenses. So did some numbers uh, and actually half, I said that half of that is slotted to be um, media budget. And a third of that is actually spent on Google and two thirds are spent on Facebook because that's also how their, um, how their views or how their spending is currently uh, focused. So they spend more on, on Facebook than on YouTube. So that's how I came to uh, the total of 1,787,500. Um, as you'll see, uh, the exact numbers uh, might be a little bit different, but the bulk of the strategy uh, won't change. So why is Purple spending so much on YouTube ads? Part of the clue is in this graph. And this graph actually shows the, uh, the amount of searches that are happening for purple mattresses. So on the Y axis, um, you'll see number ranging from zero to 100. Uh, 100 is the month when um, the most people have been searching for purple. 
So they launched in 2015 and you'll see starting from there, the graph actually going up, 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 up until today. Um, and these type of branded search queries are actually the most valuable type of searches for a brand because people already know your, your company, know your product often, um, and the conversion rate on these search queries is very high. So some companies don't even advertise on their branded search terms and just taking these sales um, organically. But the question always is for new companies, how do you get these branded searches? If nobody knows you, nobody's going to search for your brand. So let's take a look at how Purple did this. Video is the cornerstone of what makes Purple tick. And their most popular video has 167 million views. Um, and a quick look at their YouTube channel um, shows that the total of their videos actually has been viewed 627 million times. So that's pretty huge. Early 2018, they self-reported um, that, that they had over a billion uh, views um, across Facebook um, and YouTube. So um, talking about their, their videos and, and their YouTube strategy, um, so, so he, here's what I found. First, create funny and memorable ads to brand purple equals good mattress uh, into, per, into people's mind. Um, so step number two, so when the time comes, people actually want to buy a mattress, people will think of purple or people will think of that funny purple because the commercial uh, features a lot of purple. Um, they, will, they, will, they will think of the brand. So the reason they do that is that video views on YouTube are a lot cheaper than, than Google ads. Um, so that's why it's, it's financially also a good strategy. I'll, I'll share with you um, later the, the actual clicks, the cost per clicks on, on search. It's, it's pretty bad. Um, but it's, it's still a big investment and a big risk because there's a lag between somebody seeing a commercial for a um, mattress and somebody going out and actually buying one. So imagine like how often do you buy mattresses? Um, if you buy a mattress, probably you're good for like 10, 15 years, right? Um, so there's not that many people looking for a mattress and buying one straight away. Um, compare that to, to other products like, for example, our, our previous episode on Alberts where you have a pair of shoes. A lot of people buy a new pair of shoes like at least uh, once a year. So um, with the mattresses, there's, there's a longer lag. Um, and this, this conversion lag, that's, that's what it's called, the period between seeing the actual ad and then having the sale, um, that actually makes it harder for, to do attribution, um, meaning that who giving the ad actual credit for, for causing the conversion. Um, so luckily for Purple, in the beginning, things were pretty simple. Um, nobody knew about their brand and they weren't doing anything else except for um, YouTube ads. So they could compare the dollars they were putting in into um, YouTube ads and then the, the dollars uh, that we're getting out. Just look at um, the backend, uh, e-commerce backend and see uh, what comes out. And seeing that, no that that number that was coming out was, was a lot higher than what they were putting in, that gave them the confidence that this could could really work and that this was the right strategy uh, to pursue. So even today, um, attribution has gotten a lot harder for them because they're doing um, a lot of different things. They're um, on different platforms, retargeting across different platforms. Um, a lot of people already know about Purple, so it's, it's a lot even harder to do attribution. And um, they've reported that if they run a campaign um, and they, they, for example, can see a, a ROAS or return on ad spend of 1.5, meaning that they get $1.5 for every dollar that they put into the campaigns. Um, if they actually take a bit of broader perspective and look at that same um, return across 30 or 60 days, they will actually see a return on ad spend of $4. So that's more than double. Um, meaning that they, they need to be patient and they need to take a good look at where the YouTube ads are um, contributing. 
Um, but besides actually sales coming in, they also had other indicators that actually it was promising. Uh, Google, for example, has a, a study, a survey study uh, called uh, Brand Lift. And this will actually define the audience that you're targeting. So you set, you set, a, you set a campaign up and you, you define a certain targeting. Google will actually split that group up into two um, and show one part uh, they will see the actual ad and one part uh, they will hold uh, the ad from those people. Um, and then afterwards, they, can, they compare the actual branded searches. So how many people searched for purple after seeing the ad and how many people actually um, searched for purple in, in the group that didn't see the ad. Um, and comparing those two, they can see the actual impact uh, of that specific ad. So in one of the earliest um, studies that, that they did, so that's already like early or somewhere in 2015, they saw that people that had watched the ad, meaning they had watched more than 30 seconds of the ad, um, they actually had a 30x increase in branded searches for the term. Um, and even the people that, so you can always skip um, YouTube ads, so even people that skipped the ad still had a 6x increase in branded search queries compared to the people that didn't see the ad. So th this is pretty huge and, and it actually confirmed for them the, the usefulness of, of this strategy. Um, especially because that second group, people that skipped the ad, they also had a big increase in, in um, branded searches. You don't pay for this group. Um, you only pay for an ad if people watch more than 30 seconds of your ad. Um, otherwise, uh, the, that view is free. Um, so with that said, with like the broad strategy covered, let's take a look at some of the specifics of their YouTube campaigns. If you're new to YouTube ads, it might seem that you're just getting bombarded uh, with a single type of campaign um, showing ads before or in the middle of a video that you're watching. But there are actually six different campaign types. Um, and here are the ones that I spotted for purple. Uh, first are the in-stream ads. And these are the ads that you're most familiar with, the skippable or non-skippable videos. Um, so this is the, the campaign that spends the majority of the media budget uh, that Purple puts into YouTube because they are actually showing their, uh, their ad. You'll see in the, in the right hand corner that there's also a call to action taking people to uh, the website. Um, then there is uh, the branded search and this is actually has a lot of similarities with Google search. Um, and that's because YouTube is the world's second biggest search engine. So when it comes to doing research, a lot of people will take to YouTube as they would take to uh, Google search and just plug in the words purple there. Um, so they wanna be sure that they have one of their best representations of their, um, of their company, of their products there. So you can see that the video that we've already seen, um, it's, uh, it's right up top um, in that search results. So their, their goal is to be everywhere. Um, so for as soon as people um, know about the brand and they're searching for the brand, they, are, they wanna be everywhere. So that includes YouTube. A third campaign type is actual banner ads uh, and overlays within other videos. So you can actually see um, here uh, a banner across the video and also on the right hand side, um, that extra banner. Four type of YouTube campaign. Uh, this is the YouTube masthead takeover. And this is a pretty big campaign because uh, this will actually show your video banner or call to action on the YouTube homepage up top uh, for 24 hours. Um, this kind of placement is the big leagues when it comes to uh, brand advertising. So it costs $900,000 per day um, and it reaches a ton of people. And uh, this is like the realm of uh, big budget movies that get released and then uh, are pushed on YouTube as well. But those movies, they don't really have a good way to, uh, to tie it back into, into to revenue, uh, but Purple does uh, because otherwise they wouldn't be spending on it. Apart from these campaign types, um, YouTube also offers a ton of different targeting options. So one of the key ingredients of, um, of good video campaigns is testing a lot of these um, audience and uh, video advertisement or advertisement uh, combinations. YouTube has a ton of targeting options. 
So I'll go through the ones uh, that I found um, Purple was using in the past or is still using. Um, so the list is pretty short, but um, you can be rest assured that with that budget, they're spending a lot of time um, and effort trying to figure out like new combinations of new audiences and new advertisements with new campaign types. Um, so the list that I, that I have here certainly isn't um, the, the conclusive list or something. Uh, so the first targeting option is remarketing um, and this is the one that's leveraged most heavily by purple so if you've been to the website or have seen or interacted with one of their videos they're actually able to uh, retarget you with video or, or display ads so if you've already seen one of their commercials maybe the next video they show you is a bit more product focused or something targeting option number two in market audiences uh, In-market audiences are uh, people that Google categorizes as being in the market uh, for one of almost 500 products. Um, so in the case of purple, that would be people that are looking for mattresses or beds and frames. So these are, as I said, 500 predefined categories um, of different products. Um, and the reason how Google knows uh, or the reason why Google puts someone in a specific category is that, for example, they search for mattresses or they came to a site about mattresses. Um, and as I said before, people don't often buy new mattresses. So when people land on a site about mattresses, there's a pretty good chance that uh, they're actually in the market for, for something. Same happens, for example, with cars. Most people don't visit car websites, but as soon as they do, um, Google or other advertisers, they kind of know that, that something might be up and um, your, your potential customer. Um, number three, live events. Um, so live events are big changes in a person's life. And Google is also pretty good at picking this up um, from analyzing the signals. I know for some it can be creepy, but um, these big changes, these big um, shifts um, are also accompanied by a shift in spending. Um, and whenever um, these things happen and, and spending shifts, that's the moment when a lot of advertisers want, want to reach you. Uh, because, uh, so let's say you were buying one brand um, and then you, you've, you've gotten married and now, now your new family, they buy, you might buy a new brand uh, because you don't have a brand as a family yet. Um, so that, that's one of the reasons why, why a lot of advertisers want to be there. Um, so for example, for purple, if you, anytime you're moving um, or, or for example, getting married, um, it might be moments that you're reconsidering certain things. You might have a crappy bed, but then when you're moving in together, you're actually looking for, for something better. Um, so. Google actually used um, this live event targeting as a case study um, featuring the purple brand. Um, so you can see that, that they, they had pretty good results. So this is already from some time ago. So it could be that, that the results aren't super accurate anymore or this is not what, what purple is running today or, or the results they could be getting today. But um, it's interesting. For example, if they, when they ran an ad, um, they had um, to people that recently got married, they had a 170% search uh, increases uh, for purple mattresses for the brand. Um, and the people that recently moved, they had a 150% uh, lift in, uh, in search, searches for purple as well. Um, so those are good results, but they're a lot lower than the 30x increase we saw um, earlier. Um, and I don't know why that is. Um, it's probably because the, the other results were from um, earlier in the campaign um, when there weren't that many uh, people really pushing hard on, uh, on YouTube. Targeting option number four, um, custom intent audiences. And a custom intent audience is very similar to the in-market audience. Uh, but the big difference is that um, with these custom intent, you can actually define your own criteria instead of relying on Google's presets. Um, so remember before I showed you the, the custom intent, how you could do that, um, and you had to choose one of 500 categories. Well, maybe you wanna get more specific. So in the case of purple, maybe they wanna search for, um, maybe they wanna group uh, people together that have searched for memory foam mattress. Um, so you can, you can set, this, set this up um, and then Google will actually cookie people that 
um, have, have performed this search and it allows people like or advertisers like Purple to actually reach uh, these people. Um, also from, from research that I found about Purple, um, they saw a 37% lower cost per visit and a 340% uh, brand lift um, from, um, from using the, the custom intent um, audience. Uh, I don't know what they're comparing these percentages to or what they're benchmarked uh, against, um, but it makes sense that, that if you're doing video that this targeting option is, is, a, good, um, is a good one to, to, give it, to give it a try. So up until now, I've spent a lot of time talking about the technical side of doing video. The budget, campaign types, targeting options. But all of these things are of no importance if your actual videos are shit. So after that early uh, Kickstarter video that I showed you, um, they wanted to get this part right. Uh, and they wanted to aim for the best possible creative uh, they could find to see uh, what would happen if they had this. So they turned to Harmon Brothers, uh, a video agency that's responsible for some of the most uh, viral product videos uh, on the internet, like uh, Squatty Potty or Poopery. Um, so their video productions aren't cheap. Uh, their videos can easily go have a price tag of up to $500,000. For Purple, they created the Goldilocks uh, video. What's a super easy way to tell that your bed is awful? The raw egg test. Let me prove it. So that video did, did, did very well and to this day they're still using it in their advertisements. So probably it has paid for itself like many times over. Um, and, but following that video, Purple continued producing ads that are focused on, on storytelling and, and emotion. So stories over facts. Uh, but in those facts, they managed to pack in a lot of uh, facts by mixing humor with education, like in the, the raw egg test where they actually test how soft the bed is uh, by dropping a sheet of glass uh, onto, a, uh, onto one of their mattresses. And, and that's pretty, pretty cool, like it's, it's memorable and, and the video is also pretty, uh, pretty funny. So by seeing that you actually remember uh, re um, purple, it's a good mattress, right? And that was their first step to, to put into your mind that Purple makes good mattresses, mattresses where you don't hurt your back or uh, where, where you have like a good night of sleep. So apart from having a strong concept and, and a good execution, as you can see in this video, um, the foundation of success with video advertising is um, testing. And to be able to test well, um, it's not enough to test some different audiences. You also have to test your actual video. So they spend a lot of time right when they're actually producing or, or scripting out the, the, the videos probably uh, to create some, some different intros, uh, some different uh, call to actions and see how each of those versions um, actually performs. So here is the, their former VP of ads uh, talking about this whole process in a uh, presentation that he gave. We test everything. I just love chemistry and fire. So that's why I threw this GIF in there. But the intro is the most important part. And I'm gonna show three different videos of the intros that we did. Did you know that the wrong mattress protector can ruin the feel of your mattress? Hi, I'm a mom. One of the hardest jobs out there. Okay, so we test multiple intros. We actually have to plan for it, record it ahead of time. And then we test them to see which ones get the best engagement. Some of them are off Did the you know Bigfoot pee smells like lilacs and freshly picked daisies? My kid's mattress smells great, but the urine stains have voided my warranty. Hi, I'm a mom. One of the hardest jobs out there. Okay, so each of them is just that intro portion, and we never know which one's gonna work, so we test multiple of them to see. Did you know that a stain on your mattress can void your warranty? Hi, I'm a mom. 
one of the hardest I'm jobs let this out go there. A little bit longer. This is just Junior. because I love Junior. He's one of my favorite characters Junior's that we developed. Junior is a sweetheart, and it may but be he just because he reminds me of my own children at home. So all of the ads that I've shown him and mentioned, they're actually really highly produced ones. But they also mix things up. Um, here's, for example, a, uh, a customer that has recorded him unpacking a mattress um, and recorded it on his phone. Um, and that's something they still run as an ad. Uh, they put some, some visuals next to it, uh, the URL or, or some branding elements. Um, but this video has done very well for them. It, with 67 million views, um, you, you can rest assured that, that uh, they wouldn't have spent all the money promoting this video if, uh, if it was a, a dud. Um, so this is how they, uh, how they do the video testing. So they, they script, record a lot of, created a lot of different videos. Then they um, run these videos as unlisted videos on their YouTube channel, run them uh, as part of different, um, different, together with different audiences, combinations, and they see which one performs better. So by now they they've already they already have like four three four years of um, experience with the YouTube Ads platform. So they have pretty they've developed pretty uh, sophisticated processes to make sure that they are, are able with new campaigns to to beat that those earlier campaigns. Um, so and the good ones they publish them to their YouTube channel for everyone to see. And uh, this is also interesting. They also use their best ones on their website. Like here, for example, on their homepage, um, there is this button, the, the watch video, and actually if you click it, it opens the YouTube video uh, in a pop-up window. And this gives them a lot of retargeting possibilities because remember that they were able to, to target um, people that have watched or interacted with their video um, with banners or other videos. So. Um, they can do pretty advanced things. Uh, as I said, by showing somebody that has watched one of their videos, showing them more uh, product focused um, or, um, or, or different, different attributes about your mattress, like trying to educate them a bit more. Even. As I mentioned in the overview, Purple only spends a small fraction of its budget on search ads. Most of it goes to the video ads. Um, and the reason behind that is because the cost per click in the mattress niche is super high. Um, relevant non-branded keywords like mattress or um, memory foam mattress, um, they can go all the way to 30 to $50 for one click. Um, and then, it, so uh, on average, if you have a 2% conversion rate, you would need um, 50 clicks. So you would pay almost $1,500 uh, dollars for, for all that traffic to sell one mattress. Um, and the reason for that is that the cost per click often follows the product profit. So if there's a lot of profit to be made on one of the products, um, they, that will attract and other advertisers will, will see it and they will also start pushing those products. Um, then together they will drive up the price because Google Ads is a, a is an auction system, so that will drive up the price. Uh, and if you if you in a market with um, other dynamics like this situation where we have a lot of different, extremely well funded competitors, um, they even drive up that price above uh, the actual product profit. Because if you have to uh, fund all of your growth from your own revenue, well, you can't afford to to go over that uh, that threshold of yeah, profit. You, uh, but if you if you have a limited amount of VC funding, well, you can pay thirty or fifty dollars per click just to get the volume in to grab market share or um, or other things. Um, so, with that in mind, let's think back to the question that I asked you at the start of this video. If you start two years after an extremely well-funded competitor uh, that's spending heavily on Google Ads, paying thirty dollars per click and having a system in place to convert that traffic because otherwise they couldn't keep raising more money, I hope. Uh, so what can you do? What are your options? Uh, if you go head to head on Google search um, in the search ads um, with them, you'll have to do a lot better than, than they are. But that is possible, but 
probably you only do a little bit better. So you might be able to work and get a little bit better margin, maybe by having a different product. Maybe you have a slightly higher click-through rate on your ads um, or a slightly lower cost per click or a small increase in conversion rate. All small improvements. But if you're two years behind, um, your competitor is two years smarter. They've had two years of time with that much budget to get all of these systems in place. Uh, plus you have to make up for all the difference in, in brand awareness. Um, so it's already clear that this approach requires a ton of cash. So this approach also requires a ton of cash um, and it's a strategy that other mattress brands like Tough the Needle and Safa are currently pursuing. So Purple avoids most of this um, spending money by the bucket load um, by relying on video. So, but they do run search ads and a very rough breakdown of their search ads um, is actually branded traffic accounts for about 40% of their um, total spend on search ads and 60% for the non-branded traffic. So let's look at the branded keywords first. If we take a look at the branded keywords, um, there's not that much surprising uh, things going on. Uh, so we can see here, uh, we have the brand, we have the actual uh, product that they're selling. They also have a cushion, uh, a pillow. Um, you can see here on purple, uh, that was their old, um, old brand or their old um, URL, uh, which is still getting searched for a lot. Um, yeah, uh, and you can see that the, the cost per click is actually still pretty high. Um, it goes here from 285 um, up to uh, three even. Yeah, so the reason behind that is uh, probably the, the other brands, the other competitors are bidding pretty heavily on, um, on their keyword. So purple kind of has to be there um, in order to not let the, let the competitors um, just take their customers away. Um, one of the interesting things that they also found in my research um, is that actually 80% of, um, of the people searching for the brand have never been to the website. Um, so actually, these are people that mainly discovered purple through video ads, know the, they have learned about the brand and then later they use it. Um, so th that's pretty remarkable because if, if you look at it for, from, for other businesses, that number is much, much lower. If we're looking at the non-branded keywords, there's also something interesting happening. Um, so first, they, they do advertise on some uh, mattress keywords. So here you can see king size mattress, um, goes all the way to uh, $5 a click. Um, and then you see a lot of their, uh, of the products, of the related products, uh, not that the actual mattresses, but here, for example, like a bed topper or uh, a mattress protector. Uh, which is kind of related. So uh, maybe they're, they're trying to pull in people at a, at a little bit lower um, cost per click um, and then hopefully converting them to, uh, to buying a mattress at some day. Um, but that's not the most interesting part about these keywords. So as you can see, the top keyword here, um, best sleeping position, which accounts for about 6% of all paid traffic you can see here sleeping positions for 5%. Um, here, best way to sleep, best site to sleep on. You can see that all of them added up, it's probably close to like 20%. Um, and what, what's happening here is, um, if you check the, the cost per click here in, in this column, you'll see that it's like 23 cents, 25 cents. Um, and what they're doing is they're actually leveraging the search ads. Um, as I said, for, um, Mainly, they're advertising on their branded keywords to get the sales that they generated with their ads. Um, but advertising on, on these other things like best sleeping position, what, what they're doing is actually um, pushing content from their blog um, in the search results um, and then trying to convert people um, when they land on their blog, on the article on, on sleeping positions. Um, and for most brands that try this, um, this doesn't work. Um, or in very few cases, um, I've seen this, this strategy work. Uh, but in a market like this, where the cost per click is so high, um, it, it's, it's doing something different. 
um, going after things like the best sleeping position and paying a lot lower CPCs, um, that, that, that's a different avenue to, to get to that customer at an earlier stage in the, in the buying cycle. And it also allows them that top of the funnel traffic that they can then retarget with their video ads on YouTube or with banners on, um, on other websites. When it comes to Google Shopping, purple isn't doing that much. Um, we take a look here at the graph, we can see that here that they've done a lot of work in um, end of summer, uh, but then in November, they, it pretty much died down. Um, or at least they weren't doing uh, that much when I uh, researched the brand. Um, so as I found out um, later, uh, they've been restructuring their shopping campaigns and have gone to a new partner to, um, to, to help them with this. Um, so I am seeing a lot more uh, purple shopping ads popping up. And what I think they will do um, is monitor the actual um, strategy from the search ads, meaning that they will maximize their own uh, branded impressions on shopping. So before we had about $41,000 dollars being spent on um, search ads and only five on uh, Google Shopping, probably that number um, they will they will start um, coming in the in the same direction. So probably also like around forty or something on uh, Google Shopping today. Um, so I haven't got that much to show. Purple also uses a lot of display ads, which you might know as regular banners. Uh, I already show you a couple of examples from their YouTube campaigns, uh, and it's hard to tell from the outside, but I think most of those banners are actually for remarketing purchases, uh, which would be in line with their um, strategy. So they have a couple of different sets of uh, remarketing banners. So I do think they're using it for uh, a product focused banners for remarketing purposes, um, but they, they also run a couple of different uh, types of campaigns that are less product focused and more um, to target and drawing um, cold audiences. Like for example, this one uh, for targeting hot sleepers. Um, so I haven't seen in, in any of the other ads anything about sleeping too hot uh, or something, but it could also be people uh, getting people that are that are having sleeping problems or issues like this uh, and pulling them into the, the top of the funnel. Um, another avenue that they're pursuing with display banners um, is partnering with Disney. Uh, to promote its mattresses alongside Disney movies. So here's um, a co uh, collaboration they did uh, on the movie Coco. This Thanksgiving, Purple invites you to give your tired bones a break and lift your spirits on the only mattress designed for a lifetime and beyond. Uh, also for this movie, they did an imdb.com uh, uh, takeover. So you'll see at the top um, and, and in the middle, you'll actually see the um, the purple mattress uh, together with um, advertising for, for Coco. Um, so they, they did this again, um, they did a brand deal again, so that worked for the movie Wreck It Like Ralph, um, which probably means that this is also a good avenue for them to reach more people and to really get up to those higher levels of, of, of brand awareness. Okay, it's time for the scoreboard where we're trying to pull in all of the numbers together and see what kind of Google Ads performance um, Purple actually needs to hit in order to um, make the business uh, profitable. So for this, um, we're taking, making a couple of assumptions, otherwise it's, it's very hard to model. Uh, one of the things is that there's the lifetime value is equal to the average order value. So we're not thinking about um, Purple acquiring customers at a loss or break even and then making money on the upsells. So there's probably some of that happening or, or, or people managing to buy multiple products, but we're staying away from that uh, to simplify things. Um, one of the big things, so here we have the, um, the, the, the spreadsheet. Um, and let, let's take a look at these top numbers. So the top numbers are all fixed and then the bottom, num bottom numbers are the things we'll, we'll, we'll play with. Um, so here's just the numbers that I found from research, 600K visitors, 1.8 uh, million in ad spend per month. Um, and then here, average order value of $649. 
Uh, that's the cheapest mattress I could find on their website. So it's, per, it's probably a little bit uh, a conservative estimate, um, but still it, it's good to use these numbers in, um, in, in the actual uh, modeling. Uh, in the next tab, I'll show you what happens uh, when that average order value increases. Uh, their gross margin is 49%. Uh, and I'm actually pretty pretty sure about this uh, because in their investor documents that I told you about, um, they said that they had a 51% cost of goods sold. Um, so now the first, um, our first thing. Let's say that our customer acquisition cost or CAC um, is equal to the gross profit that they would make on an order. So if you calculate here, um, the gross profit they would make is 318 point. Uh, zero one dollars so let's say we would spend all of that on um, actual uh, advertising on google ads advertising um, we would make 3.6 million dollars in, in revenue and no profit um, and the roas or return on ad spend would be um, q so 318 dollars is probably a bit excessive especially because purple has uh, managed to create a bit of a different strategy where they use video uh, to actually build up that brand awareness and they don't need to spend that much because here here's sleep uh, eve sleep which is a another mattress company and they ipo'd um, about two years ago um, and one of the one of the craziest amounts here was um, their uh, conversion rate which is which is dropping uh, heavily because of the uh, increased competition so these are numbers from 2016 compared to 2017 I think or first quarter of 2017 so already some years ago uh, as you can see conversion rate is dropping average order value is also dropping and the cost to acquire a customer has is also rising so here they're spending more than 50% of the average order value on um, on actual acquiring a customer so we can say okay here it's probably a bit less so let's see what happens um, if we have um, 80 if we spend 80 percent of the profit that we're making to acquire a customer so that would be 255 dollars um, going through the numbers like that we would make four hundred and fifty thousand dollars almost uh, a month um, if we if we continue that uh, and we hit around like four ROAS uh, because that was mentioned in, in one of the, the uh, presentations that I saw so it's it's a number I think they're, they're more comfortable with 50% um, of profit would be $160 uh, customer acquisition cost so on a revenue of 7.3 million um, they take the their profit is about 1.7 um, Keep in mind that there's still a lot of costs needing to be deducted from that um, general overhead. Um, we haven't talked about shipping or returns or something. So um, that's all still uh, things that uh, we need to account for. So as you can see, uh, we can scale up um, or scale down the customer acquisition cost, uh, but these 20, 30% seem very, very low. Um, could be because they, they, they have this very different approach um, that they're hitting a low um, customer acquisition. But let's continue with something that's maybe a little bit more conservative uh, and that we would spend 60% of our profits on to acquire a customer. You can see here the average order value goes up, um, up until 1,130. Um, that's actually not that much because some of their products go up to uh, $2,500 without any upsells. So I don't think it's like that much of a stretch. Um, I think they, they have to benefit from the, the increased um, order value to make this business um, work well. Um, so you can see it's 60% of, of the gross uh, profit of that first model. So the customer acquisition cost stays um, almost the same, um, which I think it's, it's, uh, it's not an unreasonable um, uh, assumption to make. Uh, because it's also we're not paying for a specific search query we're paying for um, for the, for that brand awareness that later drives sales uh, so as you can see the, the it's it's a pretty good business uh, the way I modeled it here um, so it gives a bit of an indicator what kind of numbers purple needs to hit um, in order to be profitable so in this video we took a look at the core Google Ads strategy of purple which is to create great videos 
um, show them to as many people uh, that are um, interested in mattresses, um, whether they know it or not, um, and then like brand it into their mind that, that they need to get a purple mattress. And then when they, when they decide to get one, they go to Google or they go to YouTube um, and purple finds, reconnects with them there. Um, and I've shown you that um, this, this business, it's a, it's a pretty cutthroat business um, and there's a lot of VC money being, being poured in. So that put, puts pressures on the conversion rates and customer acquisition costs. As I've shown you from that Eve Sleep uh, IPO um, article, um, Purple will probably also feel that crunch, but they will feel it a lot less because it's different marketing origins. Um, they will feel less of this cost increase. Uh, well, a brand like Casper, uh, right now they're also doing other things, but if you're just, let's say you're just focused on Google uh, search ads and Google shopping ads, um, well, if the market gets more cutthroat and you're trying to outbid your, your, your opponents, well, those costs will, will keep rising. Um, so that was it for Purple Mattresses. I hope it was interesting. If you enjoyed this, uh, give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for uh, future episodes. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or you have a, a brand that you would like to see featured in the future, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.